in here because the dunes were large. Well, exactly at this point, where the bars tend to be relatively close, you get rip currents. So all they were doing was putting the parking lot in the walkover spots right to the spot where there is the rip current, and every drowning, every spot where this bar goes in, this is Fort Pickens Gate, there were about five drownings here. This one here, Casino Beach, where it comes in, nine drownings. There's one here, right at the Holiday Inn. Don't stay at the Holiday Inn. There were six drownings. <laughs> All the drownings are in exactly those spots, at exactly the spots where there's no dunes. It's all caused by these ridge and swales that are sitting offshore. It's hard to see with this light here. You can see these dark lines sticking out. Those dark lines are areas where the continental shelf is not as deep. To give you an idea, here's a, two different profiles. One that shows you the ridge, the dark black line, and one that shows you the swale. Everywhere that the, the dunes are low and people drown, is a swale. Everywhere where the dune is large and the island is wide, is a ridge. And it repeats its way along. There is a swale, a ridge, a swale, a ridge. And it continues along at about 1,400 to 1,500 meters. It says that this island, the behavior of it during storms, the structure of it, is ultimately controlled by this ridge and swale topography. It's because what you start to get is the variation in the wave breaking. Wherever you've got a ridge, shallower water, waves break easier. As a result, the bars are stripped offshore. Whereas where you've got a swale, the waves don't break until they're almost close to the shoreline and the bars are close. And as a result, you also get rip currents. And this, these, all these points are everywhere somebody is drowned that we mapped out there. And they all line up with these swell environments because that's the spot where the waves are the smallest. 